Hello, I'm Alice from Harmony Paper and Art. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some paste papers. So there's some simple ingredients you can use to make paste paper. You can see I have some here. This was made actually last week. So this is generally something that's thicker than this, but you can see it's been out of the fridge for a while and it's thinned out a bit. And this is just made with cornstarch. So this is mixed 10 parts of water to one part of cornstarch. And that's what these paints over here are using as their base. So in these, I've added some liquid, kind of a thinner acrylic, some crafting type acrylic. I have some different kinds of um, tubes of acrylic paint and a tub of acrylic paint and that's what I've added to these ones along here. Another thing you can use is wallpaper paste. So I've mixed up some wallpaper paste and I haven't mixed the paint into it yet. And move that out of my way. And this is mixed four parts of wallpaper paste powder to one part of wallpaper paste. And then you make sure you stir it the whole time so there's no lumps and then it needs to sit for five minutes. So here is the paste that I made for our paste paper. This is 10 parts water to one part cornstarch. You introduce the cornstarch into the water when it's cold. Make sure you stir it all up to get as many lumps out while it's still cold. Then you put it over the heat, you bring it to a boil, and you cook it on simmer it for a couple of minutes. And it comes out this sort of see-through clear glue. Uh, when it's cooling, it develops a skin on top. So I've scooped the skin off, here it is. I don't know yet if I can whiz this through the little food processor afterwards maybe. But that's what I've done with some of this. It's still kind of lumpy and bumpy to use with my paint. So I whizzed it through a little food processor. And now you can see the texture is kind of smooth running now. So I've used that to mix up some colors. So that's what I've got. Some green, blue, a light lilac. This one is actually a, a color shift paint and some deeper purple. I have a couple of wet cloths, one to dampen my paper, one to wipe up the paint so I, before the next one. Um, you can also use sponges. And I have a variety of tools here and brushes that I can use to make different shapes, designs, things like that. I can use this to make some writing type of shapes. I was taking apart um, a, a pad of um, samples of upholstery fabric and these big staples came out of them. So I thought, what the heck? I keep all kinds of little doodads for these projects. Here's a button. I have a glue stick so I can make some round marks. I have a comb and I have a couple of palette knives. So let's move this aside for now. Let's get mixing some of these paints. So I'm mixing about a teaspoon or a generous teaspoon or so of paint into my glue mix. thereabouts. Now the, I don't know about the wallpaper paste because I haven't used this in a long time, but the cornstarch paste paper, the paste you make with that, can last in the fridge for up to a month. I've never tried re-cooking it to thicken it up again because it's mine has been sitting out on the counter for a while and it's thinned out. Uh, I might try later and see if I can reconstitute that into paste again. It's thinning right out and watering down. 
So you just need some good stirring to get these going here. So there's all my colors mixed. I'm working on a piece of plexiglass. This is an old poster uh, frame. So I've taken out the wood and the plexiglass on top and it's great to work on for this kind of a project. You could also use freezer paper or, or parchment paper. I also have a piece of parchment paper set up in front of me here so that I can move my papers to dry. You can see I wet my plexiglass here. I've got a little spray bottle of water. I can spray my paper. You want to make a damp, but not soaking wet because I've tried that a few times, getting it too wet, and then your paper falls apart as you're trying to move it. So I'm going to flip it over, dampen the other side. Basically, when I'm using a sponge or a cloth like this, I want to make sure there's no wrinkles in it or air bubbles under it. And now we can have some fun. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take a brush here and start applying some of these paste. Ooh, what a nice color. So you can layer the colors if you want to. You want to make sure you rub your paint in both directions. Just making sure it's thoroughly covered. I'm going to just rest my paintbrush there. I also have some clean water here so I can soak some of my brushes if I want to. There's a few things you could do. You could press your paper together like this, rub it and then pull it apart. Kind of makes an interesting texture. Not much showing on that. So let's try something different. I like this tool here. This is for uh, using for grout or something like that when you're grouting. So it makes some cool grooves though that are simple and wide. And I can go the other way and just make a crosshatch kind of a pattern. I can add other colors if I want to. I can add some different kinds of colors and shapes to this with a different tools, different colors. Really, the, the limit is only just your imagination and what you've got on hand to work with for these. I can also use my button and make some little doodad marks. Well, I think I might have turned it over. Some little round marks. Will that work? Not quite. Well, let's try something bigger. We'll try this. If you move it a little bit, it kind of gives a 3D effect almost to your, to your shapes. So that's kind of interesting, fun. I'm just gonna move this one aside. I have three different sizes of paper here. That was just a regular printer, eight and a half by 11 paper. This is also printer paper, eight and a half by 14. And I'm going to go through the same process of dampening this. Just gonna make sure the other side is damp and that there's no air bubbles under it. See, got a little wrinkle there I wanna get out. Oops, my frame is 
shifting here a little. I can see you had started to buckle there and not sit down flat where it's not wet enough or damp enough yet. So I'm just gonna spray it a little more. I can see the areas that aren't quite wet enough. Get out all the air bubbles. Get out the wrinkles as best I can. There we go. All right, so this one, I think I'm gonna use this lovely blue color. Oh, it's a blue. Now, the more paint you put into your paste, the more opaque your paint will be. The less paint you put in, of course, the more transparent or translucent your paste paint will be. And of course, how thick you spread it out on the paper. Again, I'm brushing in both directions, make sure I get a, a good coverage on the whole piece of paper. Yeah, maybe I'll add, should I use the same brush? Oh, why not? Here is some of my cornstarch paste. And I've got some green here. I'm going to add some of that to this. It almost looks like water now if you keep layering on the blue and green. So, with that thought in mind, maybe I'll make some wave kind of shapes on this one. Let's see what I can do with this. Get into a paintbrush. You could paint whole pictures of this if you wanted to add some plants into a water like a little pond or something. I also have this little tool here. I'm going to use it to make some little circles. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to push it up. And that makes pushing it up move the paint. And again, like I said, it gives a 3D effect almost when you move it. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, they kind of look like bubbles on the water. In the water. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting here. I'll do a few more up here. Fill our spaces. I also have a little um, glass cleaner here, and I use that to lift the corners because the paper gets a little delicate once it's this wet and that's just because it's a thinner copy paper. So I'm going to clean up that paint, clean my tools quick, clean up that paint. I have one more piece here to do and this is a piece of watercolor paper. So this is 140 pounds so it's a lot more solid than um, then the printer paper, copy paper. I'm using a foam brush to wet this. Take off the excess with my cloth here. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna make plexiglass under it wet also. Take off any excess water with my cloth, and let's see what we can do this time. Okay, I already got this on a brush, so let's use some of this, and maybe I'll do some stripes with this. Another brush, 
and and try it with a foam brush. I'm gonna put some of this dark purple in between. Ooh. My brush is collapsing. I think I'm gonna have to switch brushes. Maybe I'll try this. This is a trim brush from house painting. Let's see what that does. Ooh, I can just go right across in big swipes like this. Oh, that's kind of interesting. There's so much fun experimenting with this. I think for this one, I might try some squiggles with my little tool here. It look like, somebody can see if it looks like writing later. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And maybe on the other parts I will. Hmm, what will I do? I have a comb here. You could try using that. I don't see a lot of results. You have to be fairly close up to see the results of this. It's very fine. Or I could set this one aside now to try. So here are some paste papers I made in the last few days that are dry now. And one of the things that you can do to these, that's kind of interesting, they're all quite different. One of the things you can do with this is take a soft cloth and some beeswax, and I'm hoping this is warm enough. And, and you can rub, I might have to warm the wax a little more than what I've got here. Rub your paper with it. It gives it a kind of a shine, helps to show a little more 3D. And making a whole table shake. Also gives a waterproof finish to your paste paper. So I ended up melting some beeswax here because it was a little too solid and sitting upstairs in a cool room. So now I'm going to apply it and see how it looks. Move this out of the way here. You can see it gives a soft kind of a glow. It gives it a little bit of a solid finish. Folks often ask me what you use these paste papers for. I do a lot of book binding, so these are often used to um, make some of my book covers. And here's a book that I've started to make. This is a little watercolor book. And I've got some backs of the um, watercolor pad cardboard here. I'm going to cover these, glue these on here, and I will glue them to the front and back covers of this book. This is just a little blizzard book, so it's all origami. There's no binding in this, and this lets me take out the paper, paint on it, and then put it back in. So that will be the covers for this book here will be with some of this paper here. I can all, you can also use it for cards, the background for a different painting. The, what you use it for is limited only by your imagination, the same as the paste paper. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time.